Hey, my name is Karthik and this is my wife Sim and together we're the brown man life. In this video, we're gonna be answering 15 of the most common questions that you guys have asked over and over again. So let's get to it. So how do you make money? Are you a full-time travel influencer? Oh, are you a millionaire? Do your parents just give you a lot of money? You must be really loaded. <laughs> I wish guys, I wish. But the first question that we always get is, how do you make money? and what do you guys do for work? The reality is we are working full time in our respective fields. I work in digital marketing. And I'm a freelance IT consultant. As much as we would love to be full time creators, our income is not dependent on creation so far. Just yet. Just if you yet. guys stick around with us long enough, maybe that dream could be a reality one day. We might be able to say we're full-time content creators. The immediate question is that how do you find these jobs? So let us take you through our journey on how we started off. So the first step towards a journey into remote working was switching our career to more skill related roles rather than people really oriented roles. So for example, instead of being a manager, we started focusing on technical skills, started specializing in search engine marketing instead of being an account manager. In my case, instead of trying to progress into, let's say a project management role or a manager role, I started going deeper into the technical aspect of the software that I specialize in. And then the next step was to finding a remote job. We started off way before COVID. So we have been working remote since 2018. Our process was different. Back in those days, there were not that many remote jobs. So the approach we took was, we started applying for jobs outside our city and started giving interviews. And of course, there were so many, many, many rejections. But after like 10 rejections, there was one call where they really liked us and they were they didn't care what our geographic location was and hired us to do the job. And that's how it started for me. Yeah, to elaborate on that, I started seeing how Sim got a remote job and I was really jealous that she didn't have to go into the office to do her work. So I started doing the exact same thing. I started applying for jobs all the way across in Vancouver, which is from the other side of the country. And eventually, after many, many rejections, like Sim said, I finally landed a job where they actually did not care. I convinced them that I can do the same job even better than I would be able to do it in person because that's my working style that I prefer. And they just took a chance on me and gave me the job and I was able to build up on my remote working skills ever since then. However, in the past two years, as you guys might have experienced yourself, remote working is way more acceptable now by more and more companies, allowing the workforce to work remote and from home. I think when we started, the ratio was like 80% full-time jobs, 20% remote, and now it's the other way. 80% jobs are remote and 20% full-time. In fact, when we were working remote back in those days, our parents were like confused. Do you even have jobs? Why are you sitting at home? <laughs> yeah, like they didn't understand why we're sitting at home and working. But now they have seen the whole world do it and they understand we actually have jobs and not just sitting at home. In this day and age, you have so many options to find these jobs, starting from Upwork, even LinkedIn, or specialized platforms like Guru, Freelancer, Optotal. I can link all of these websites down below. Believe me that you're gonna have to give it many months of consistent tries before you land a gig and that's just the way it is because you have to start building out your profile somewhere just like how we are in YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> this follows up to the next question. Are you a freelancer and how many hours a week do you work? So yes, I am a freelance IT consultant and the number of hours I work in a week really varies on the project load that I have going on. But on average, I can say that there's at least minimum of 40 hours of work going on in a week, which is equivalent to your normal full-time hours. Sometimes it can even vary. It can go more and it could even go less. Uh, for me, think, uh, it's a little different. I'm an independent contractor. What that means is my hours are fixed in a week. I have to have a minimum of 20 hours, 30 hours, 40 hours, like fixed minimum salary I'll earn. So that's the difference. The next question is, how do you manage work-life balance while traveling and working full-time? This is a very heavy question, so I'm trying to simplify it. Basically, it involves a lot of planning, like planning, planning, planning. Three core things that we need to plan. First is, What's the dog? Go. There's a kid crying in the background. Three core things that we try to plan. First is we try to plan our itinerary. We try to identify the places where we are going. Uh, what are the places that have no network? And what are the remote areas that we want to explore? That way we make sure that we don't clash our meetings and important work deliverables with those destination or those places. Second point is the days we have meetings or the days we have important deadlines. 
we make sure we have connectivity by looking in advance. There is a source of internet or Wi-Fi there and making sure we are not covering distance, we are stationary. So again, we prioritize our deadlines and work beforehand. Third point that, that has been really, really helpful is starting our day super early. So when we start our day by 7 a.m., by 1 p.m., we have already put in six to seven hours of work which gives us enough time to do things that actually make us happy while traveling. A sunset hike with Everest, exploring a new destination, things like shooting content and doing photography. And that way we make sure we are being responsible towards our work and enjoying traveling at the same time. So what do you do when you're in a beautiful place and you do not feel like working? You don't work, that's it, you go surf. I'm kidding. This one is very simple because we actually love what we do. But there are those days where you're completely occupied by work and you are in a beautiful place. That's the beauty of van life. You can stay there as long as you need to and enjoy the place once you have no work to do. The next question is, is our work flexible? Do you know work-life balance? Okay. So this is a yes and a no answer. Yes in the sense that it is flexible because we know all our meetings and project deadlines weeks in advance and we can plan our travels right around that. But also the major advantage of this flexibility is that there are some activities and things that need to be seen in the daytime. So we don't do any work in the morning and the flexibility comes into play where we can instead go and do, do the travel in the morning and dedicate our night time for the working tasks that we have pending. And no, in the sense that we do have strict deadlines and deliverables to follow and we're responsible enough not to miss them. The next question is, does the constant moving and the time zone change impact our work? Technically, no, because we are traveling across Americas and the most time difference we can experience is plus or minus two hours between Central, Pacific, and Eastern time zone. So the two hour plus minus time difference we can easily manage by waking up two hours early or staying back two hours late. This is one of the key questions and it is how do you manage internet? There are two sources of internet we mainly rely on. The first one is every time we enter a new country, we always make sure we buy their local SIM card. And not just one. Me and Sim both have a SIM card from a different carrier each, just so that in case one network goes down, we always make sure the other one is still active. And these SIM cards, we simply just use our mobile phones to use as hotspot devices to connect to our laptops. The second method is to rely on public Wi-Fi's. You'll be surprised, all over the Americas, public Wi-Fi's are easily available in every single restaurant and cafe you go to. To make sure that your internet is efficient enough to complete the work that you need to, we have three major tips. The first one is to use this website called nperf.com, which is short for Network Preference. This website basically tells you which area has reliable 3G or 4G connectivity. The second tip is that once you make it to the location that you're gonna work in, make sure you do a speed test. Use speedtest.net and make sure that the speed is at least 5 Mbps. This is gonna allow you to do smooth zoom calls. And the last and final tip is that because you're working with a lot of different clients, make sure you invest in a reliable and secure VPN. VPN basically lets you secure your data when you're connected to public Wi-Fi as often. Our next question is, how do you manage work calls? Well, of course, the crucial part of a work call is managing internet, but on top of that, you have to make sure your sound quality is really good. So, for that, we have taken two steps. First is investing in a good noise cancellation headphones, and the one we picked was this Jabra headphones. These are really, really good because sometimes we're in outdoors and there could be a dog barking, a rooster, or just wind. These headphones cancel everything out, so they work amazing. And on top of that, we have also installed this plugin in our laptop called Chris. It does the same thing, it cancels out any other noise in the background. So these two combined together, we have managed to execute calls in really, really noisy environments without any issues. The next question is a really interesting one. Somebody asked us, how do you manage your bad days at work? Now, bad days at work happen in every work environment. This is no less for us also. We've definitely had a few of those since we started working remote. What causes our bad days is a, a, a day where we have major connectivity issues and our calls get dropped off and we don't like those days at all. These days can happen even when you are sitting at a home or office and we take them as just technical difficulties or network issues. So the next best thing we could do to tackle this is we inform our team we are having a technical issue, we relocate to a place with better network and we ca catch up on the missed work and just move on with the day because this can happen anywhere in the world. 
Next question is, doesn't it get exhausting and stressful to plan out every single day? I'll be honest, yes, it completely does. It used to get us really stressed about making sure that we're in good connectivity places whenever we had a work day. But now, since we've gained so much experience doing this, we just know that this is the kind of lifestyle that we've chosen to live and this part of planning comes with it. So one of the major things that we've changed over the past few countries is that we make sure that we do not cross into a new territory where things are brand new on a work day. We make sure that we always do this on a week weekend so we have enough time to set up and make everything work for the coming, uh, for the following week where work is going full force. So basically over the past 18 months we have figured out what part of that this process stresses us out the most and we have come up with solutions for them which we are sharing with you right now to make sure that this lifestyle does not add up stress into our day-to-day -day routine. Do you sit in the van and work all day? No, the only time we are sitting in the van and working is if it's raining outside, it's really bad weather, we are in a really noisy environment and there's no other quiet place, that's when we come inside the van and work. And the beauty of van life is we literally work in some of the most scenic places from the most beautiful coffee shop, beaches and that's what makes our work so much more enjoyable because the scenery keeps changing and uh, we absolutely love it. Last and final question is do people take you seriously at work because you're traveling all the time? I actually found this funny hilarious and also I was a little annoyed because I take my work very very seriously and I know that my team members value my skills and work that I bring to the table. Like we have been working in our respective fields. We are specialized in what we do. And in fact, we don't miss anything and almost over deliver to make sure nobody can raise a finger around our lifestyle choices. Finally, I think it's important to say that if you're working at a workplace that doesn't value the work you do just because in the location you're in, then this lifestyle might not be the choice for you. or it is the lifestyle that you want, but the workplace that you've selected is not the right fit for you. Make sure you figure out the exact match because then work-life balance is in perfect harmony. All right, we did it. Finally made the most requested video and I hope you guys find all the answers that you were looking for. And if there's anything that's missing, you know what to do. Leave us a DM, leave it in the comments and we'll make sure to answer you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel because we are bringing you guys videos every single week, minimum one video and we have a crazy goal for this year to reach at least 50,000 subscribers. So hit that subscribe button, help us out if you guys love us and we're going to see you guys in the next video. Bye!